What is going on everyone? Thank you for clicking on the video. So, I just wanted to show you something real quick because I am a little mind blown. If you've seen my day of eating videos, I've been eating something, credit to Travis S. called the Poverty Brownie. Basically it's just uh, protein mixed with some baking soda and some Hershey cocoa. You mix it together with some water, put it in the microwave. It forms a brownie consistency. I like it because it's not a lot of calories and it's pretty filling and pretty big for what it is. But I just found something that makes it even better. So this is the Poverty Brownie. All we have here is uh, 30 grams total of protein with 10 grams of Hershey cocoa and some baking soda and water. So now why is this different than normal? I'm glad you asked. I started using uh, half casein instead of the other half being whey like I was doing. I used egg protein. And I guess this makes sense now when you think about it because you typically use egg whites or eggs when you bake to make something like more fluffy. And by using the egg protein instead of the whey protein, this thing fluffs up so much more. It actually tastes like a cake now. Like it was, I always liked it, but now it's more cake consistency. It fills up this Tupperware a lot more than it used to and it's like twice as filling. So if you haven't tried the Poverty Brownie, I recommend it. And if you're going to try it, definitely get egg protein. Uh, Universal has it, egg protein, it's doing wonders for me. So I just wanted to share that with you guys quickly before we get to the rest of the video. What's up guys, welcome to my latest lower strength workout. Uh, I realized as I'm about to record this that the workout footage is actually shorter than I thought it was, but I'll take you through this quickly and explain a bit along the way. Um, so I recently switched back to an upper lower split from what I was doing, which was like five through one style training. What I have been doing as far as my progression on the main lifts of squat, deadlift, bench, overhead press, I do four sets total, and I, on week one, I do three reps. Week two, I do four. Week three, I do five. So four sets of three, four sets of four, four sets of five. After those three weeks, if everything goes well, I bump up the weight five pounds, and I start back at the bottom. So here you see me doing 320 on squats. This is week four on the routine. So I did start with 315, worked my way up to uh, four sets of five, and now I am up five pounds and doing four sets of three in this workout. And like I said, I'm doing that with all of the lifts. So this workout, it's only four exercises, and I get a lot of comments from people like, oh, you only do four exercises for your lower body day? Uh, yeah, so I'll get to that in a second. I don't really love doing deadlifts right after squats, but the reason I do like it is because by doing it on this workout, I don't have to do it later in the week, and it allows me to have a full dedicated leg day rather than have to waste like 40 minutes or 35 minutes deadlifting. Because deadlifting and squatting heavy, it takes time to warm up. I would say my warm up for squats and deads each is like 15 minutes. So this workout, despite only being four exercises, is probably my longest workout at roughly like an hour and 40 minutes. I probably spent 40 minutes squatting and deadlifting, um, all inclusive with the warm up. And then after that, I move on to leg press and calf raises, which is quicker. But the only reason it's four exercises is because it's a strength workout. So it's focused on strength. And then keep in mind my hypertrophy day during the week for legs. That's all focused on volume sets. I do drop sets. So between the two of them, it's plenty of volume, don't you worry. So even though it's only four exercises, it is, it is a long workout and it is plenty. So when you watch this footage, you might get the wrong idea because I, I thought that the footage was longer myself because the workout took so long. But then when you edit it, I didn't film all my sets. It came out to be a lot shorter, but it is actually my most difficult long workout, I would say. And as far as what I did is, like I said, four sets of squats, four sets of deadlifts, three sets on this leg press, four sets on the calf raises. And then I figure I put abs on my lower day. I hate doing abs. This is already a difficult workout. So I'm like, hey, why not make it a little bit worse? And I throw abs in here. Um, I only do abs once a week because I do figure that they do get stimulated with almost every workout during the week. So I just train them hard once a week and that seems to be sufficient, but you could do them twice a week if you wish. Um, I don't really think it's necessary to do more than twice a week. Uh, as far as the abs, I do this exercise right here, three sets of 10. And what's not shown is I did another super set of like a weighted crunch machine and like a body weight crunch machine. But like I said, I did not film that, only film this. And that is the whole workout. So 
like I said, it's only four exercises, but don't let that fool you. They are pretty tough. They do take a while, this workout overall. It's about an hour and 40 minutes, probably my longest workout, I would say. Um, but stick around for the rest of the video as I am going to be trying two brand new flavors of Halo Top on camera that I haven't tried before. So stick around if you do want to see that. Hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Thanks for watching so far, and I'll see you in the next clip. Hey guys, hope you liked the workout. So we are going to finish up this video with two separate Halo Top flavors that I haven't tried before on two separate days. So first today, I am going to try the brand new gingerbread house flavor. I don't know what this is going to taste like. I don't even know what gingerbread is, but I'm going to have this one today and then tomorrow, which is also going to be part of this video, we'll wrap up the video with the oatmeal vegan flavor. So first, let's try this. It actually looks good. Ooh, it's very creamy. This one's not vegan. Mmm. Okay. I didn't really know what gingerbread tasted like, but now that I'm tasting it, it's coming back to me. So this might surprise you, but this gingerbread actually tastes like gingerbread. It's actually really good. But more importantly, more than the flavor is the creaminess. So this is a good flavor. The ginger is not my favorite overall, but there's chunks of like cookie in it. And I really like the creaminess, so I definitely approve. So that's Gingerbread House. And like I said, we will finish up the video tomorrow with oatmeal cookie. So stay tuned, and then that will be the rest of the video. Not gonna, be, not gonna lie, I'm actually not that excited to try. So it's the oatmeal cookie, and it's the vegan one. So between being oatmeal, which doesn't sound very exciting, and vegan altogether, I don't know how good it could be. So my expectations are low, which is probably good because it could really only exceed my expectation at this point. So just from sticking the spoon in, it's actually creamier than I expected, so that's a good thing. Well, okay. I'm pleasantly surprised by the oatmeal cookie. It's creamy. It has a nice like oatmeal cookie texture and taste. There's some kind of chunk in it. This one's actually very good. If you like oatmeal cookies, this tastes exactly like an oatmeal cookie in ice cream form. And it's dairy free too, so Good job, Halo Top. I did not expect that. This is actually very good, so I am gonna go sit down and eat the rest of it. That's gonna wrap up this video. If you guys liked the video, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up. It does help me out, I appreciate it. Subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you in the next video.